Good morning and welcome to History of Interiors. Today we're going to go over the Biedermeier style um, and we're going to go over this one really quickly. Um, this was a style of Austria in the early 1800s. So we're finally moving away from France but still on main continent Europe. So to give you a little bit of background on this style, the revolutions were going on or had just happened in France and the Americas, and the Austrian government encouraged a very quiet family life. So everything was really controlled by the state, there was a lot of censorship, but this translates into a really simplified style. The main figure of the time was Papa Biedermeier. He was the symbol of the movement, and he was a fictional and comical char character, um, and he was incredibly simple. There was no grandeur to him. Um, everything was very, like I said, simplified during this time period. The stylistic inspiration for this style does come from that French Empire style that we just looked at, though you're going to notice that this is intensely simplified. The motifs used were the volutes, lyres, and pilasters, um, so going back to those classical elements. So now we're going to look at the furniture. They made use of many light-colored woods, including pear, cherry, apple, birch, and maple, um, but they would contrast that with ebony. So they would use that for pilasters or palmettes, um, and that would really contrast those light-toned woods. So on this slide here, you can see one of those cabinets that has the contrasting light and dark woods. And then you can also see the really, really simplified version of a French Empire or classical element. You do have the triangular pediment up top as well as the little rosettes being used throughout. Sorry for my writing here. Um, but like I said, it's just an incredibly simple style, while still being completely useful and rather purposeful. So this is another entertainment cabinet, um, that is done in that traditionally Biedermeier style. You can see the contrasting wood tones, as well as the use of the pediment and the rosettes. So, Joseph Danhauser was the important cabinet maker of the day. He did have a factory which was located in Vienna. Um, and he would make chairs and some other things as well. Sorry. Moving on to the interiors, we saw plain surfaces and smooth forms. So, that's not that different than the cabinets that we just looked at. The walls were usually painted in a single color or they had a very simple striped wallpaper. They did, however, make use of the dado and the cornice, which would have been in contrasting color to the walls, and those would once again be either painted or covered in a wallpaper. They also used plants as decoration quite often. So here you can actually see an example of one of those interiors and you'll notice that you have the single colored wall, um, a really simplified cornice board here, um, as well as everything being in those two contrasting tones. Um, but you can definitely see the influence of the French Empire style, right? You're still seeing a lot of those militaristic designs, as well as that Clismos look on the chairs, um, even down to the French parquet flooring. So you can see a lot of influence of France here, but everything is done in a far more simplified manner. So this also had influence on other countries, much like we've seen with every other style that we have covered, but the countries are going to be Germany and Scandinavia. Um, so that's where we're going to see this design style remain quite popular. So just to review, everything is very simplified. Um, 
but it does draw its influence from the French Empire style. So that is all I have for you today, but I hope that you have a great rest of your day and good luck with the rest of your module. Um, this is the end of Unit 2, so next week we will start up with Unit 3, looking at Spanish and English styles.